Despite their fortified castles, the Umayyads were unable to maintain their authority. In 750 Common Era, the Abbasids, who traced their lineage back to Abbas, the uncle of Muhammad, killed some 80 members of the Umayyad royal family during a banquet. Only one Umayyad prince escaped, Abdullah Rahman I, who relocated to Spain and established a kingdom in Al-Andalus, or Moorish Iberia, proclaiming his family to be the Umayyad Caliphate revived. For the next 200 years, Cordoba became a thriving metropolis, ruled by Umayyad emirs. Meanwhile, some 3,000 miles to the east, the Abbasids moved their capital to Iraq. Capital cities were Baghdad, the city of peace, and Samarra. This shifts the center of gravity of this vast empire, the world's largest at its time, which reaches from the Indus River to the Atlantic decidedly to the east. Baghdad is about 30 kilometers from the ancient capital of the Persian Empire, Tazifon. Culturally and politically, these new rulers showed ambitions to surpass the Persian Empire from many centuries earlier. The Abbasids transformed the nature of the Caliphate from elective to dynastic. They recognized all Muslims as equals and abolished the privileges of the Arabs. They recruited an army of slaves and mercenaries who were devoted to the new dynasty. By undermining the military power of the individual tribes, they centralized power, administration, and government. Trusted governors, loyal to the dynasty, were put into positions of power and replaced frequently. This explicitly imperial attitude was publicly enshrined through ceremonies and arts and architecture that imitated Byzantine and Sasanian models. The new capital Baghdad came to control the major communication and trade routes with the intent to outgrow the leadership role of Constantinople. Within a short time period, it became the largest city in the world. Founded by Caliph al-Mansur in 762 on the banks of the river Tigris, Baghdad had taken the place of Damascus. It was known as Madinat al-Salam, or a city of peace. The name was referring to the Abbasid attempt to put an end to strive for succession that had destabilized the Islamic world. The city was encircled by a ring of perfectly circular walls fortified by 113 towers. There were four symmetrically arranged entrances leading into the city, each crowned by a dome topped by a rotating sculpture. The city was organized into concentric rings, forming living districts for the various ethnic, tribal, and economic groups in the empire. In the center of the city was a vast central esplanade, which was occupied by government buildings. The symbolic axle of this many-spoked wheel was the Caliphal Palace. Abbasid architecture was characterized by a tendency to colossal dimensions, which might have been adopted from Sasanian precedents. The royal palace complex in Baghdad covered about one square mile and, according to travelers' accounts, sported 22,000 carpets on the floors and 38,000 tapestries on the walls. It was equipped with spacious royal gardens featuring mechanical songbirds and gold and silver trees. Charlemagne corresponded with the Abbasid caliph Harun al-Rashid. The book 1001 Nights preserved the image of this court and its love for luxuries and pompous display of power. Today, the only Abbasid palace left in Baghdad 
is a two-storied brick monument near the north gate overlooking the left bank of the Tigris River, presumably built under the reign of Caliph al Nasser Lidinilla. This impressive structure highlights a grand barrel vaulted Iwan, whose geometrically composed brick decorations are reminiscent of Seljuk ornaments. As under the Sassanids, solutions for the covering of large surfaces in an aesthetic yet economical fashion was resolved by the use of stucco plastered on the wall and worked with a stick, mold, or stamp. Motifs are often vegetal and repeated ad infinitum. The large rapports of such motifs can create a visionary or even hypnotic magnetism typical of the Islamic concept of art.